So this case that I'd like to present is a female patient. She's 30 years of age and she presented to me with concerns about intermittent tinnitus and pain in both ears. She was getting a lot of complaints from her friends and her family that she doesn't listen or you know needed to get her hearing checked and she told me that she had a history of noise exposure and she was getting increasingly anxious about the possibility that her hearing was deteriorating. So audiometry revealed a uh, very normal um, audiogram in both ears and uh, DP OAEs was essentially normal in both sides. So at the moment, um, I didn't have anything to be concerned about. And we then performed um, wideband tympanometry. So Lillian, there's there's a little bit of a difference here. We've got more purple on the left than on the right. What's that telling you? To the degree that we see here, I wouldn't consider this an, an asymmetry of any kind. Uh, yes, it may be that there's a little bit more of uh, energy being absorbed uh, by the left ear relative to the right, but we're looking into an ear canal volume, a resonance frequency, and a peak pressure that's really close to normal for this given patient here. And that's also what uh, is indicated by the uh, 3D graphs. So, uh, so far, it looks uh, it looks normal. Okay. I mean, she did have a little bit of soft wax in her left ear. Um, would that show up on our wideband tympanometry results? Uh, it's, it's a good idea to pay attention to how the measure is building up. Uh, when doing the 3D graph, so to look at the 3D graph while uh, the measure is building up, uh, that's a quality indicator of whether there's uh, some kind of noise in the measure. Noise can be various things. It can be uh, movement, placement of the, the probe. It could be crying, uh, movement, uh, somebody talking in it, um, but it can also be that there is some some tissue uh, in the ear. You know, for the small children with the normal uh, 226, uh, when we, we run that uh, with small children, they have a soft tissue, which is why we, we recommend the 1000 hertz or the, the white band average in there. That is also a kind of noise that can be present in the measure uh, because we we have an assumption that we're looking into an, an, a cylinder of the ear canal, you could say. So if there are some degree of tissue in there that could, could sli show up slightly in the measure. So we have this little indication uh, potentially here that you see some of the, the curves are a little bit uh, rough in there and that could be an indication that there there is a slight degree of noise that has been been introduced um so one would know if if we had seen so during the the measure um obtainance fantastic okay let's have a look at our tympanograms page so on the left hand side i think you can see that noise on the 226 can't you that you just mentioned it is a little bit wobbly it is a little bit more rough yes in it but our wideband average tympanogram, that kind of averages that out, doesn't it? It's quite a clean sweep that we've got over on the right-hand side there. Yes, and it will because we are looking at multiple frequencies at once. So that would be, be averaged out a bit more, uh, as we also know with other kind of averages. Let's have a look at the right side. Um, not a huge amount difference here. I don't think we're looking at anything uh, asymmetrically, are we? It's it's all quite smooth and um, and straightforward. Anything there that's causing you alarm? Mm, no, not really. It is again it's symmetrical. Pay attention to the parameters of the volume, uh, the uh, pressure we see, and the, the compliance in there, and all of that so far looks looks normal from both the. Uh, two to six the average uh, so far so so nothing to to make the um, awareness uh, raise in, in this regard okay let's see if the absorbance graph offers us any more information uh, so these were the absorbance graphs now we've got our sh gray shaded area is the normative uh, data um, and the, the right hand side is pretty solidly within that, but the left does go a bit out of that. Is that something that is significant or, or is that just the way things are for this particular patient? For this one here and where it's going out, I would not be uh, too concerned. Uh, the main area where we see uh, an increase uh, in amount of energy being absorbed, uh, where that is having a uh, impact from a more pathological point of view, that is around uh, one kilohertz and a little bit below. Um, and then, of course, it is a matter of where there's then a reduction percent, and that is a, in a lot of other cases. But here it is an increase in amount of energy, and here it is in the higher frequencies, and here it's right on the edge of the normative range. 
Um, so again, for these two here, yes, there might be a slight uh, asymmetrical uh, pattern that we see, uh, but not of nothing I would be too concerned about. Uh, we have to remember that the normative range we are looking at here, which is also indicated up in the upper right corner, that is the 10% to 90% uh, normative range of the percentiles. So um, we have another one indicating 5 to 95. So that means that uh, in a few of the cases, so for the 5 to 95, there would still be um, a certain amount falling outside. And the same here for a little bit more for the 10 to 90%. So there would still be a group of uh, people outside the normative range. Um, and that is likely to be the case also here on the, the left side. So I would not be, be too concerned um, also given which parameters it is that uh, we're usually looking at uh, where we see an increased amount of energy in the absorbance. That was very much my conclusion was that uh, we were looking at a, a normal healthy middle ear, her OAEs were, were present and her audiometry was normal. So I, uh, I reassured her and sent her away. Um, do you think I've done the right thing there or would you have made a different interpretation? Not from the results we have here. Uh, so from the, the 3D uh, information and from the audiometry that we had, there is no uh, abnormalities uh, indicated in, in that regards. Um, so so uh, not for the information we have, no. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you.